So my friend and uh, fan of the channel, Rob Jones, was staring out his window one day and realized 12 inches in a ruler, 12 chromatic steps, and he wanted to figure out how he could make this work. So from A to G sharp, you're going to have 12 notes, basically. And he and many of us are always trying to figure out ways to really understand the modes. So he came up with the idea of taking a roller and making several of them. Uh, in, in essence, I made eight. I think I see six here right now, but I made a total of eight so that I could make the major scale twice. And then we're going to dedicate uh, a mode to a ruler. In other words, we're going, we're going to have a new starting point for each ruler. We're going to define a new number one, but they're all going to be based on the same steps. So our first step is to make a mark at the two inch mark. Uh, if you're used to metric, sorry. Uh, and then you're going to make another one at the four inch mark. And uh, then we're going to just go one more inch and make a mark at the five. So we're basically looking at two half steps for a whole step, and then two more half steps to equal a whole step, and then one more half step, and then we're going to go ahead and finish our whole scale, or I'm sorry, our major scale formula by adding three more whole step intervals and finish it off with a final half step. Um, if you make yourself one of these, I, I recommend Sharpie and a nice surface that you don't mind messing up a little bit. Uh, we're basically going to kind of define the seven intervals of the major scale and relate it to the 12 inches on the ruler. And we're going to define our half steps first. And we'll take those half steps that I've made and we're going to make them black. So at that four to five inch mark and then the 11 to 12 inch mark, we're going to completely fill in with our black Sharpie. Uh, I also have a silver Sharpie that I'm going to use uh, for those numbers uh, when we get there. But for right now, take a black pen and mark off number one in that section. And then over the number three, I wrote number two. We're going to skip the black because it won't show up. Then in our next area that's open that has whole steps, we're going to put a four. The next whole step will be five. And this one will be six. Now, these are the whole steps within our major scale. And the half step is going to then be represented in the major scale by number three and number seven. And so I'll grab my silver Sharpie real quick. And just to get a reference point, make sure that I, I label those properly so that we can really see clearly where all these intervals lay in relation to uh, each other once we start laying these rulers down and start finding our new starting points. That's all a mode is really, is a new starting point within its parent scale. So we're gonna call this major scale the Ionian mode. Uh, and it basically has the, the major formula of a whole step, a whole step, followed by a half step. And we're going to label this as our major or Ionian. And we're going to point to that little arrow there that points to that first black mark. That defined, that, that interval of two whole steps and then having a, a half step following that is going to be our major chord uh, formula. If we have a major chord, it's going to have two whole steps from the root of any of these modes. And then we'll, I'll show you when we get to the next one, but a minor would have a whole step and a half step or a half step and a whole step. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit more clearly here in a minute. But we're going to want to take uh, our Ionian ruler and we're going to want to make a couple of them because it's going to help just kind of 
lay all the rest of the rulers down and give us a real good visual representation of this. So I'll take my silver sharpie and mark the first half step interval area as three and this last one is going to be seven. That's our leading tone leading us back to the root. You can hear when we hit that seventh degree it's kind of asking us to start over. So that's the major scale. That's what it sounds like in A. So take one of these major scale rollers and um, make another one just like it. Yeah, and now we'll have two octaves of a major scale. And we can place them next to each other and we can start to see A to A or really any major scale, but for what I'm playing, I'm going to use mostly A, the key of A, to reference this as our starting points. So now we'll take our next ruler after we've made two Ionians and we're gonna we're gonna make a ruler for mode two or what's called the Dorian mode. And uh, if you're paying attention, you can see I'm, I'm doing this upside down at the moment. Uh, I didn't realize that at first, but all I'm gonna do in a second is just peel that piece of tape off. I used clear rulers and I'm using tape just for that sake, just in case I make a mistake. So this mode two, or mod two, got a couple mistakes here. Uh, we're going to also put a Roman numeral two on that ruler. And you see how I have the Roman numeral one on the first ruler. These Roman numerals will, will represent uh, the chord shapes. If it's lowercase, that mode is going to create a minor chord. It's going to have a minor third interval. And if they're capital, like the one and the four and the five, they're going to have a major third. And all of these, except for the last one, are going to have a perfect fifth. All of these modes, except our seventh degree, are going to have a perfect fifth. The minors will have a minor third interval, and the majors will have a major third interval. And when we get to that seventh degree, you'll see where the fifth goes it just goes down a half step and you can probably tell by once you start to really do this you'll start to see where those half steps lay so here i'm going to pull the tape off real quick and fix it so next step is to take your dorian ruler and move it to the beginning of number two and then i take a sharpie and i'm going to outline the two half steps first this makes it real clear on the ruler we're going to make just two one inch marks and then when you pull it off from the reference point you'll see there's our half steps if we were to start from the second degree or if we were to create the Dorian mode off of A in, in the case that I'll be playing in a minute uh, this would be where we would be starting from the B note the next note in the in the major scale would be B a whole step up to B and then B half step to C sharp we're going to be in the key of a doing this so a has C sharp and it has F sharp and G sharp is a, as part of the key signature so that you don't have to know necessarily because we're going to be able to do this with any key, uh, any major key, and then figure out all the minor modes and other major modes or all the other starting points. And visually, hopefully you can see how this will start to lay out. You'll, you'll now call the first degree of mode two the new one. We'll skip this two because uh, I don't have my silver sharpie in my hand and we'll just make sure that we go through and label all the other steps properly and then those half steps will start to you'll start to see where they shift out this is now the second so our next whole step area is going to be our third to the fourth and then fourth to the fifth and then you can see fifth to the sixth is going to have a whole step and then six to seven is going to have a half step and then our seven to our major root again or well, I'm sorry of our minor root is going to be a whole step 
So you can see how now instead of starting on A, I'm going to be starting on that seventh fret or the, the B, and I'm going to just continue the A scale all the way up to B. So that's the Dorian mode. That's the B Dorian mode. And as I said before, a major, major chord is going to have a whole step and then another whole step in it. And that'll give us a major third. What we just played now actually was not that. That's what a whole step sounds like. So there's A to B, B to C sharp, both on the open A string and then starting from the fifth fret. A minor chord is going to have a whole step and a half step, or it's going to start with a half step or a whole step. Here's what whole to half sounds like. So that's a minor third from B, oh, I'm sorry, from A up to the C. And that time we went A to C, but we did it with the B flat as the second note. So A to B flat is a half step. A to B natural would be a whole step. We're looking at this degree, the mode two that has whole or half. Now that half or whole is going to pop up in the third, in the Phrygian mode. And it's actually also going to pop up in our seventh mode. So starting with Dorian, you have a half and a whole. Your Ionian is going to be major. And that's going to be the one. You find major chords that are formed on the one and the four and the five. We'll get to that in a second. But you see, there's a whole step, and here's another whole step. So that defines a major third. We're going to that major third. Now, a half step up to the fourth. That's what that sounds like. So now we can kind of start to see there's our major interval. If we were to just go A to C sharp, that would be the beginnings of our major triad. And then if we went to the fifth degree, we would add the next uh, set of um, intervals to build the chord. Basically, when we're building a major chord, we take two whole steps or a major third, and then we add a minor third. There we have root, third, and fifth is what we're hearing. So we're going up two whole steps to the third, and then from the third, we're going to go another half step and another whole step. And if we just kept doing that, as you can hear, you can get to the seventh degree as well. So we're looking at the odd numbers, one, three, five, and then seven. And in the major scale, the one to the three is major. And the one to the five is perfect. Uh, and like I said, we're going to see perfect fifths through most of these. Uh, and we'll see either a major or a minor third in all of these. So that's how you build extensions as well. Once you go past, if I put that other ruler up there, once you go past that seven, you want to go another, you know, either major or minor third, depending on what the interval is. So here I am putting up the Dorian mode, and you can see now, it doesn't fit with that until you slide it over. And now we have a, a kind of a whole new way of looking at a minor chord. We have a whole step and then the half step. And you can visualize it here on the ruler where this difference is. There is our new chord starting on the second degree of the major scale. We will have a minor third from that new root. And that's what that minor third is going to sound like there. And then we're just going to kind of keep on going and make sure we build our perfect fifth here. And so now we have the proper intervals. We're going from root to fifth which we want to hear. So I'm doing that in a couple of different positions. 
So you can hear when we just go root to fifth, we're not hearing a minor or a major, and those are your power chords. Um, and then when you define the chord, you know, by adding either the third uh, that's major or minor, then it starts to create the sound of the chord. It's, it starts to really define where in the progression it's being served. And so you start to see a pattern that will happen as you make these rulers, you'll start to see, oh, well, that's why a key has a, a relative minor and and then another minor that's just a little different and then that Phrygian minor and then the crazy Locrian minor. And, and you'll see how there's one note different between all of those. And then the same thing with the major, you'll, you'll start to see how there's really just one note different between when you build a major scale off of the root or off of the fourth or off of the fifth. There's just going to be a small difference, and it's really just one note of a difference between those two. So now you can see the rulers will line up, and starting at that mode, again, at, instead of starting at mode one, we're going to start with mode two and go here and run the A major scale, but it's going to now be the B Dorian scale. And the characteristic sound of the Dorian scale is going to be that minor third and that minor seventh, but it's going to have that raised sixth. Do you see how the sixth degree is just a half step away from the seventh? Now what we'll do is we'll go through and label all of our rulers according to the mode names. And we'll do the same thing with the Roman numerals. You're going to add mode three, write the word Phrygian and then write a minor third in there and lowercase Roman numerals. And then we'll do mode four, which is Lydian. And that's a Roman numeral four. Mode five is gonna be Mixolydian. And we'll just keep on doing this. The next one after that will be the relative minor of the key, which is Aeolian. And then after that, we have the Locrian. So do this to all of your rulers, and you'll end up with the proper, at least, order. <laughs> and then eventually, what I'll show you is how to lay these down. And you just keep moving that first starting point over by the next degree. So when you're making mode two, you start at mode the beginning of the second degree. When you make your mode six, you put that ruler there at the beginning of the sixth degree and you match your half steps up and then you fill out the ruler and you'll end up with a very neat visual representation a real easy way to take a scale and compare it to another scale just by holding the ruler up to it and see where these starting points are and in the the next few lessons coming up on this we're going to use these rulers to explain chords, pentatonics, and three note per string scales. And that's where I think this really shines is using that modal phone number that I talked about a couple years ago from that guitar for the practicing musician issue where John Finn taught us about the number 1473625. That number sequence will fall into place here soon. Um, that's pretty advanced. It's it's kind of cool to just, if you're not into the three note per strings yet or into that whole thing, at least get yourself familiar with these starting points uh, and how these modes actually create. It's really no different than a ruler. And I think this is a great way to visualize this uh, modal theory that so many of us guitarists just can't picture the way that pianists can. You know, you lay down your hands on a piano and it's the same thing every 12 notes. Whereas a guitar, we shift our notes around. Uh, the, the, the guitar is tuned by fourths other than the B string. Then you got that major third tuning in there and then it shifts back up to fourths and nothing's really the same. So here we go making our Phrygian mode. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the A major scale, but starting at C sharp and ending at C sharp, starting at the third degree of A major, of our Ionian, and then continuing until we hit that tonic again, until we hit that third degree an octave later. And that's what this scale, this ruler represents. And, and you can put it next to two of them like that and see how it moves into the next octave. We'll do the same thing here with Lydian, which is the major scale, but it has a raised fourth. And so what does that mean? It means that instead of having a perfect fourth, the fourth has been raised by a half step, or in the ruler's regards, one inch. It has gone up one inch. So the, the fourth degree of the fourth mode is going to be not perfect. It's going to be augmented. It's going to be a raised fourth. And you can see that as you lay it down, that now we're starting on the fourth degree, and that half step occurs after three whole steps now, not two whole steps. So that's our major difference between the Ionian and the Lydian. We still have a major third interval, but after that major third, we go another whole step, not a half step. So Lydian is still major, uh, built from the fourth degree. Uh, it gives a, a nice major sound. That raised fourth degree actually adds a little bit of an ethereal sound. The, the dissonance of the natural, or I'm sorry, of the perfect fourth within the natural major scale uh, adds a strange kind of tension to it. But that raised fourth kind of gives it just a little bit more of a lift. It makes it sound like a nicer major scale. It's quite common uh, for composers that really want to get that tear-jerking moment, uh, like in a movie score, John Williams is famous for using the Lydian mode right at that moment to get you to cry. Uh, Steve Vai uses Lydian a lot in his real sweet um, uh, melodies uh, and just gets a really nice spacey kind of a sound. Uh, the mix of Lydian is also major. It has a major third and the perfect fifth. The, f the fourth is perfect. It's not raised like the Lydian. But what we do in the Mixolydian is we actually flat the seventh degree. So you can see that the, you can hear it here, starting on the root to fifth, starting from the E, we'll get this scale. Mixolydian has kind of a bluesier sound, and it's basically just starting on the fifth of your Ionian scale. And it's, uh, it's a very common rock and roll sound. It's the sound of major blues, uh, where they take the one, four, and the five, and instead of uh, playing the appropriate major sevenths, they turn those chords into dominant chords. So each one of those chords is kind of built around that major third, minor seventh relationship. That's where blues comes in and breaks these rules. This ruler will not really work for the blues, but in future lessons, I'll talk about the pentatonic scale and the blues scale and how we can kind of find them within these uh, ruler patterns. There's a couple of them that will quickly and easily show us uh, whatever kind of pentatonic minor or major we need to use over any of these chords within a specific progression. And that's where it really comes down to is what is the chord serving within the progression? Is the A the one, and that's the key of A, or is like the A the five, so that if you were in the key of D, D major, your fifth degree would be that new starting point. So here's our sixth mode. minor sound. The Aeolian has a minor sixth and a minor seventh, as opposed to the Dorian. If you look up at that top ruler labeled Dorian, where you see we have the half step happening 
between the sixth and the seventh there, we have now instead we have the half step happening between the fifth and the sixth. So these modes are really just one note different from another. And that one, four, seven, three, six, two, five really does start to come into play once you lay these rulers out in the three note per string pattern. Uh, or if you start making chord shapes with these rulers, which we'll get to, we'll, we'll start to talk about how you can find a key and then find a, a particular scale that will work with that key or, or find a chord progression that you really like. Maybe it's just two chords or maybe it's four chords. You can start to fit them into place with these rulers by just making the right starting and stopping points and then bringing out those specific notes as they fall within the scales. Uh, your ear starts to really get really well trained by doing this. You start to hear these intervals. So here's our last one, the Locrian. It's built off of the major seventh of our Ionian. And you see, if I try to do it right there, I run out of frets. So we're, we're really looking at starting on a G sharp, that note right there. See, it's a half step down from our root. And you hear that weird tension that it gives. It's, it's so many people call Locri in that useless mode, but you know, it's the one that fills in the gaps. It, it, it just kind of takes up the space. It, it has to be there, you know? So you may as well learn it. You may as well understand that process. So go through your rollers, fill after you've labeled them and figured out where your half steps, shifts occur. And when you start to see how these half steps are only happening in a couple of specific places per mode, that really should start to at least open your eyes up and say, okay, I can see this is like a roadmap. It's, it's like this neighborhood of A has a few houses around it. Uh, and they are a certain distance from each house. And if you walked out of the second house, you still have the same distance from the one house over to the other. So it's like a neighborhood. And then if you move out of the A major neighborhood and over to E major hood, you still get the same relationships. It's, it's an interesting thing that starts to happen, and you start to see it unfold as you start to play with these rulers and move them in your mind from key to key or practice it on your guitar, or whatever instrument you use, you can, you can start to see these starting and stopping points for your modes, and how they just are really beginning within the Ionian scale. They're, they're all relatives. You see the difference here between Dorian and Aeolian there was just a very small difference. So go back and look at that. And if you like this stuff, give us a subscribe. There's a lot more to come. Thanks for being here.